Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Vizzy Art Paris Love Letter Palette. So if you want to hear my thoughts, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a Pura Technology enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And it seems lately there hasn't been very many launches that have caught my eye, so I haven't been doing reviews quite as frequently as I normally do. But I was really excited to see that Viseart came out with a new palette because I was like, finally, something that I can review. And Viseart definitely holds a very special place in my heart because they were, I think, the first brand that I actually did use and love on a regular basis when I was a very small channel to give me PR. So this palette is gifted. However, I was gonna buy it even if they didn't gift it to me because I love Viseart. They are such a small brand of very kind people. They listen to their customers. They have great customer service and they are a brand that's not afraid to take feedback from the consumer and that I really appreciate. With that all being said, let's get into the palette. So as stated before, this is the Viseart Love Letter Palette. Now this is a $44. It is currently available on the Viseart website, the Muse Beauty Pro website, and the Beautylish website, and I will have all of the places that you can buy this palette down below if you are interested. We'll start off with the size, the packaging, the details, and then we will get into the actual colors themselves. So this is the Eton Du version. So all Eton Dus are the same size. So this is a newer size for Viseart. They only came out with this size a couple of months ago. It started off with the violette then they introduced the mink set i do not have the mink set but these are all the same size and what is important about the fact that they are the same size is that you can mix and match the shades within each of those palettes because these are very easy to come out because viseart is really made for the makeup artist being able to mix and match shades is very important and if i didn't have a youtube channel i would definitely be mixing and matching all of my little viseart shades what i really like about what they've been doing with their palettes recently is the packaging. I am a sucker for packaging so I appreciate all the cute little details. It still keeps it very plain and simple which is what the Viseart aesthetic normally is but it still makes it cute and fun for people like me who do love the packaging. Now if you aren't familiar with the packaging it's a soft matte touch. Very easy to clean. You have a mirror and it's able to stand on its own or however you would really like. And of course we do have the interchangeable metal pans. Now this guy is made in the US say and Viseart has a very long shelf life for their products. The eyeshadow palette right here is 36 months which personally as a makeup hoarder that's great news for me. It gives me a little bit more peace of mind that I have more time to use this. Now this is their spring 2021 launch so as you can see this pop of green is kind of the start of the show here. It's what I have all over my lid. I have used this palette two times. I haven't used every single shade in this palette. There's a couple metallics that I have yet to play with and maybe one or two mattes but for the most part I do feel as though I have a good feel on this palette. Now in this palette you are getting 12 shades, six of which are going to be matte, three are going to be what I would consider shimmer and then the other three are going to be metallic. And I feel like Viseart doesn't put their metallic finish in their palettes enough. I really feel like they've gotten a better hold of that formula in their most recent palettes. So I'm really excited to see three metallic shades and you can truly tell the difference of these metallics between their shimmer shades. It's not a crazy foil like some of the products that we see on the market but that's not really what Viseart is about. But look how beautiful those are. So I'm really excited to see the addition of metallic shades in this palette and even the shimmers in here they seem to have a little bit of extra oomph to them just a little bit of extra subtle very subtle sparkles now a little bit of a spoiler here there were some shades in the shimmers that I feel like were inconsistent so I do want to get straight into this tutorial where I tell you my feelings as I'm using the palette just so you can see what I'm talking about I have already prepped my eyes I use the makeup by Mario prep and set and then I also have set my eyes with the translucent powder I'm gonna start off with letterbox using a BK beauty to Two, and I'm going to use this shade to lightly brighten up and highlight my brow. As you can see, it's really not much lighter than my skin tone, but if you have a medium skin tone, this will work great as an underbrow highlight. Taking my Alamara Cosmetics Crease Brush, we're going into buff. Now, I want you to notice 
this. This shade has a crazy amount of kickback. There seems to be almost <laughs> no press at all. And I noticed it was weird when I got it in the mail. It was kind of broken and I pushed it back in and the shadow itself felt very, very loose and like there would be a ton of fallout, way too soft. And I've never gotten a shade from Viseart that quite felt like this and it's too much of a mess if you ask me. With a BK Beauty 202 brush, we are going into Chocolatier right here and I'm going little by little in with this shade. So I just start off with just a little bit of definition. I'm actually gonna use MAC 217 because I want a little bit more precision with this. So we're going to come back to this brown. I'm going to run it along my lower lash line as well. Like I said, we're not done yet, but we'll be back. I'm using an Isam W21 and for this look, of course, I had to use this springy, gorgeous green. Now what I discovered from doing the first eye is you will get a lot of fallout with this shade, so you might want to consider either using a glitter glue or doing your eyes first before you do your face makeup. So you can see I already have a ton of fallout right there. So with a brush, it is a bit messy so if you want the experience to be less messy use your finger and work it into the skin almost melt that powder into the skin so that you get less fallout and now at this point I'm going back into chocolatier and don't forget the depth out here so you'll see this green shade which is called blooming it's not as creamy as I would like for it to be because normally that creaminess is what allows the pigment to stick to the lid and that's why we get a lot of fallout and I have to press it into this skin it's really beautiful beautiful, it's really subtle, but it can be a bit messy. Using the same brush, I'm gonna go into this shade right here, which is Poem. Now I love how this row here has the metallic finish from Vizzy Art. I feel like they did a really beautiful formula with this. It's very refined and, and I feel like Vizzy Art doesn't put this formula in their palettes enough because it really is stunning. Now it doesn't give you a very pigmented base, but the effect is just so elegant and glittery without being too obnoxious. And that shade can create some fallout, but for whatever reason, this shade gets everywhere. <laughs> Taking this old Coastal Sense brush, we're going into Beloved, and this is a shimmer finish, and this one is creamier, so I don't get fallout or anything from it like the lid shade. It's just gonna highlight those high points of the eye, places I want to brighten up, and then I'm gonna go back in to Blooming, and I just wanna put some right here, carry some of this springiness into the lower lash, Line. Then finally, if you want more definition, don't be afraid to go into Chocolatier again. I love this brown. It's blending beautifully. I'm gonna take a Refer 19 brush and try and clean up what I can. Like I said, going forward, I will either use a wet brush, glitter glue, or I just won't do my face makeup before I do my eyes. So that's the look I'm gonna put on liner and lashes now. So unfortunately, with this look in particular, I didn't have the best experience. I would say in this entire palette, I'm most disappointed by the blooming shade and by this matte shade. So pretty much this matte to me is unusable. It's way too messy. I have to use way too light of a hand. And I don't know if it's just my palette, if there was a bad batch, or if the shade is supposed to be so soft, but it's so messy that it makes me not want to use it. And as somebody who is doing their makeup every day on the go in the morning, this isn't a color that I would want to reach for. And it's very odd because normally I find the Vizzy Art Matte Formula to be a little bit of a harder press. Typically their matte shades feel a little bit more dry. So this is the weirdest, softest, powdery feeling matte. And none of the other mattes really are like this in the palette. Now the palette it will give you fallout because it is a drier formula. Even the mattes, you do have some kickback, but it's nothing out of the ordinary, you know, but this color, very odd. Also, the blooming shade, as you could see, I had to keep reapplying and reapplying because honestly, the shade just kept wiping away and I did not like that. While I was able to pack it on, it looks really beautiful, it looks really soft. It just wasn't as easy to work with as I would expect a Viseart color to be and it, it made a huge mess underneath my eyes. Now, with the shimmers in general, you are gonna have to adjust a little bit. You are gonna have to work with it so that you don't get so much fallout. But I think the other shades are more justified in their falling outiness because they're so pretty, they look gorgeous on the eye. So this shade is a one that just kept wiping away and it's a shame because I do think it was so important that this shade worked really well because it is kind of what your eye is immediately drawn to and it's what you want to use. So while I do think, especially on the shimmer side, there is a little bit of inconsistencies there, with the exception of the matte 
here. The rest of the mats are beautiful. I love how much playroom I had with this chocolate, how easy it was to blend out, but also how easy it was to build up, use a light hand and go softly. So I think the mats in here are really great, obviously, besides this one. And the metallics are really beautiful here, but you do have to be careful with these shimmer shades because you will get fallout. Now, while my experience creating this eye wasn't the best, I will say this is the second look that I've created. In the first look that I did with this palette, I did a kind of soft, natural, peachy eye. And I love this palette. My initial very first impression that I didn't get on camera was that this palette is a beautiful, subtle palette that a neutral lover is going to enjoy. But then when I went in the second time, I was like, okay, maybe it's not as perfect as I initially thought that it was. So I don't think this palette's going to be for everybody. If you like high impact, high pigment, a lot of vibrancy to your looks, this is not the palette for you. A lot of times, I think the overall vibe and aesthetic of Viseart is those soft, after more natural looking kind of eyes anyways. They do have other palettes that aren't quite so natural. Like I do really recommend the Violet if you like something with more vibrancy, the Dark Edit. So they do have a couple palettes that pop up in their range are, that are more vibrant, but they definitely play with the softer side of makeup. And this palette in particular I noticed is going to give you a lot more soft of a look than most of the others. And overall, because it's like a springy palette, you're not gonna get a ton of depth. This is the only palette that really brings you depth. And if you don't use it, you get a very, very light eye. So if you like depth, I don't think this is a palette for you. And it is a very pretty palette, but I will be 100% honest. I don't think it's Viseart's best. And I don't think it's something that you need. But if you are into subtle, springy, peachy kind of eyes and you're looking for something that's just going to give you a little bit of glimmer, a little bit of natural pop to your eyes, I do think that you will like this. Now another comment that I got about this palette was it reminded you a lot of the Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson collaboration, the Tiny Marvels palettes, which did just restock by the way, but I believe it already sold out again. Now the reason that you immediately thought of the Tiny Marvels is because of that pop of green and then also this kind of pop of purple. but. To be completely honest, if you ask me, these palettes are not dupes. The green in the Mel Thompson is matte, the purple in the Mel Thompson is matte, and it's more lilac. The colors that are similar are going to be the colors that pretty much every palette has anyways. The coral is similar, the brown is similar, this shade is similar. All of the neutral tones do kind of match up to the Mel Thompson, but what palette doesn't have those colors, you know? So if you have the Sydney Grace palette and you were kind of backing away from the Viseart because you thought it was too similar, I personally don't find them to be similar at all. Not only are the colors different, but the overall vibe and purpose of the palette is different as well. With the Sydney Grace, I mean, it's all about pigment, vibrancy, glimmer, all of that. You're gonna get that from this palette, whereas the Viseart palette is more about the subtle nature of the look that you are getting. So that's all we have. That is all I have to say about the Paris Love Letter palettes. Again, I don't think it's for everybody, but if you have a certain look that you're going for, then I do think it is a good palette for sure. But of the Vizzy Art collection that I do have, there definitely are other palettes that I prefer. Now, did you guys see that Vizzy Art was or has come out with at this point, I believe it's called the Grande Pro 1X palette. And basically it's a step up from the original Grande Pro 1 palette that I loved. And I got that palette three years ago, so I definitely plan on picking up the new big Viseart palette. So let me know if you would like a review on that one. Now most of those shades are similar to the one in the original Grande Pro, just with a little bit of tweaks here and there. The pans are a little bit smaller and you get five additional shades, I do believe. So that is a palette I am really, really excited about because my Grande Grande Pro 1 has gone through it and I need to refresh it. So I'm really excited for that palette. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this palette? Did you pass? Did you pick it up? If you did pick it up, I want to know if you had the same experience as me. And that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.